Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this video is about installing digital rebar for the first time. We call it DRP, and you'll hear me use that term throughout the videos. There are three different ways that we're going to cover for this first install process, isolated, virtual, and cloud. They all have the same basic setup, so we're going to show you that process in slides, and then we'll have special videos for each one. So make sure you're watching the right video for your environment. If you're not sure which one, hang on, we're going to talk about which one is which. No matter which install process you're using, it's all pretty much the same thing. You download Digital Rebar from the infrastructure's code catalog, you connect it to the infrastructure you want, and then you'll explore our full catalog and do more advanced things. Uh, those obviously are outside the scope of this video. So for your first Digital Rebar install video, you need to choose how you want to approach it. The simplest is to do a digital rebar on your desktop. This means actually running the service on your desktop itself. We have a special mode for that that doesn't set it up as a permanent service. Um, and that's a really nice way to get started, but it requires a Linux or a Mac desktop. Uh, it does use less resources and it's an excellent quick start. It's sort of our, our history quick start. The other choice is to just run digital rebar in a virtual machine and then use that to provision other virtual machines. This works really well for Windows desktops. If you have a virtual uh, cluster that you can use as a dedicated infrastructure, or you don't want to have any impact on your desktop at all, uh, it uses more resources and RAM because you have to run a VM for digital rebar, but it doesn't leave any trail. You can just delete those VMs. And then finally, Digital Rebar in the Cloud is the newest addition to the Digital Rebar install family where you set everything up using cloud infrastructure. Now, that won't let you test pixie booting and machine provisioning, but it does let you play with all of the infrastructure's code capabilities, our Kubernetes and K3S capabilities, and build your own content packs, uh, play with our multi-cloud and distributed cloud infrastructure. So it's a lot of advanced functionality that works great using the cloud infrastructure, and Digital Rebar works just fine in those cases also. So let's get to it. In the uh, Digital Rebar on your desktop, this is the environment that we're going to set up. We'll install Digital Rebar, and then we'll build the virtual machines in a host-only network so we can pixie boot them. We turn off DHCP in the VirtualBox or VMware system because Digital Rebar provides the DHCP system. It will only talk to that, bind it to only talk to that network. So everything will work just fine. And we'll walk you through this process if this is your path. The digital rebar and virtual machine is very similar to that process, except instead of running it on your desktop, we have to set up a virtual machine first. Usually a CentOS uh, machine is a good choice with four gigs of RAM and then attach that to the NAT network so you can download digital rebar and the host only network so you can pixie boot VMs. This actually is a bridged situation, works very well, uh, just requires a little bit more setup and more RAM on the system with running the demo. And the final is DRP in the cloud. In that case, you actually provision a machine in, in the cloud using the cloud infrastructure. You open port 8092, the digital rebar API port, and then you install cloud wrapper and cloud wrapper will automate the process of uh, provisioning and connecting to other virtual machines in the cloud or other clouds if you want uh, and connect all those together. So all three of these processes have the same basic step. They download our install.sh from getrebar.digital, they make it installable, and then they run um, the install.sh with install as the criteria. The difference in the isolated mode is that you actually tell it that you want an isolated uh, system. You ask for the version you want, usually tip or stable, depending on your, your level of interest in pulling in the latest things or, or just playing around with the last release. And then in this isolated version, you have to start digital rebar provision, DR provision yourself. Uh, that means you have to tell it where the files are going to be. You have to identify that it's a start to start the runner and create itself. In the cloud and VM models, you can run it as a systemd process. Of course, you could do that on your desktop too. You're welcome to. Um, but when you run install.sh and pass in systemd and tell it to start up, it will actually install as a systemd process and start it. 
So you pass in the parameters here and they get built into the system D definition. Very similar processes, but um, if you are able to just have a dedicated machine for digital rebar, it's super easy to just use the system D install. Once it's installed and running, and you shouldn't have to SSH into the um, cloud boxes if you pass in a bootstrapping script, then the first thing you're going to need to do is accept the TLS certificate. So uh, you'll go into the machine's IP colon 8092. It will accept the certificate and then redirect you to the digital rebar uh, UX, the hosted one. Now, none of the traffic is actually coming to rack end. You are downloading a single page app in React, which is our UX from rackend.io and then connecting directly to your digital rebar. We don't uh, cross your networks. We don't open firewall ports. We don't send traffic. Uh, we are not in the control loop. We're just providing the UX. Once you log in with the password that you chose or the default one, if you didn't set a password, rocket skates is the default R zero C K E T S K eight T S. It will prompt you if you hover over the question mark. The next step to do is to get a free trial license. This will enable all of the features that we are going to install and download as part of the trials, uh, including the cloud wrapper pieces, which do does require a uh, license to fully enable. Uh, provide a password. This process is changing, so if you're watching this video, uh, this is the old process that we're showing where you uh, give an email, you wait for a token, and come back. The new process eliminates those steps, and you will be able to just uh, provide uh, information that you feel comfortable providing, and then it will grant you a short-term license immediately. From there, if you want to go to the system information and follow the bootstrapping wizard. The bootstrapping wizard is designed to make sure that you have configured all of the pieces and parts necessary to have a great trial experience. Uh, that includes making sure your passwords are set, setting the base content, making sure that you've uploaded the ISOs and boot environments, subnet definitions. Um, if you're in cloud, you don't need to worry about subnet definitions, preferences, SSH keys, and then finally starting the machine. So this walks you through that. As you accomplish each step, you'll see a checkbox. If you click on the words, the, the link words, they will take you to the place you need to go to get that, that step done. And then finally, in the this demo, we are trial modes, we are always uh, encouraging you to use our bootstrap system, which means digital rebar is actually running an agent on itself and it can provide the bootstrapping processes automatically for you. We use this for zero touch remote edge installs um, and it's really, really convenient. And so we are recommending that for your first experience. Once you have this demo installed, then what you can do is literally run through the bootstrapping process um, on the machine and it will do all the setups that need to be done automatically for you. And now it's time to provision Digital Rebar in a virtual machine. So let's get started. To make this work, I have built a virtual machine that has um, a pretty beefy setup. Uh, let me show it to you. It's got uh, eight gigs of RAM. It's already running. It's got four processors allocated to it. Uh, and it's got a 50 gig hard drive, 52 gig hard drive. And I went through and made sure that my LVM partition was completely expanded to use up all the space. Uh, this machine was provisioned with digital rebar, which didn't set the uh, partition to max. Um, and I went in and I fixed that. So you do want a system that has a lot of space on it, especially if you're testing this with CentOS, which has a huge uh, boot ISO. Other systems don't require as much storage and digital rebar itself can get by with, with a very, very svelte amount of on-disk space. But if you start provisioning ISOs, then you're going to be importing that ISO and expanding that ISO. And uh, CentOS itself takes um, about 25 gigs to get the basics going. Don't blame us. That's their ISO. So let's get rolling on this. Now that you've seen I've created that machine, I can come over here and SSH into that, that system. So SSH into, let's do this. I'm gonna move into my ISOs directory. That's where I have um, my CentOS ISO waiting for the time we get to that, that stage. Um, I will walk you through that process and you'll see exactly where it kicks in. But for now, we're gonna to go to SSH, 
root at uh, 192.168.56.100. .100. That's the machine that I've chosen for this. And I can log in and everything looks fine. If I DF here, check my free space, then um, you can see I've got that 52 gig volume and it's only 4% use. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. And now I just need to bring over my curl install script to get started. Let me walk you through what this is. So this is saying I'm going to download my install script and I'm going to tell it I want a system D runner for VM that's appropriate. I'm doing my normal bootstrapping stuff. So I have the self runner using the latest version, the tip version, uh, instead of the stable version, just to get the latest features from a testing perspective. Uh, if you're doing this just for play, a lot of times our stable is exactly the right place to start and I'm telling it to install. And with that, we are completely ready to go. The system is, is going out to the internet. This machine is connected to the internet. That's important. So it has two networks set up while we wait for that to happen. I'll show you that. The networking here, I have my host only network adapter. So that's my booting infrastructure. DHCP has been turned off on this network. That's very important. And then I have my NAT network so I can reach the internet. And so this system is able to pull and download files. One of the things that we'll do later on in the setup is we'll turn this machine into our gateway. So all of the other machines that we attach will be um, specific to only needing their boot infrastructure, Nick. Uh, there's a ton of ways to configure these systems, but the simplest is to just let that first machine be the gateway. And at this point, we are done. Um, the install is running, things are going. Uh, this version of the install script is, is recommending that I do things like upload sledgehammer and set preferences. The self runner can do those steps for us. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how that works. Also, you can, you can of course cut and paste these pieces in, including the uh, CentOS and Ubuntu installers. Uh, these are a little out of date. So we have 2004 and version eight available. So move this out of the way, come over to my uh, browser looks excellent. And we're going to go to HTTPS and then just visit the machine's IP address, in this case, 168.56.100 uh, on port 8092. That's Digital Rebar's uh, initial port. And uh, it's all HTTPS. So Digital Rebar during the install self-signed a certificate to allow me to use HTTPS. And I've gone through and, and done that. Had to accept the certificate. Now, now that I'm running, this is brought up uh, Rackens UX running um, downloaded from the portal. I'm going to go ahead and go to the tip version. So we're going to show you the very latest things. This ensures that things I show you in this video, um, they'll be promoted into the portal and they should be available by the time you're watching it. Um, but what, what's important to note is this digital rebar is securely behind my firewall. Uh, I can't reach it. Racken can't reach it. Um, it is strictly running on my system. Digital Rebar is running, uh, UX is running on my laptop or my desktop as a, re, as a um, React application. And it's talking directly to it. Racken is not in the middle of any of these com uh, communications. The default password here is, is going to be set. Um, so I just need to look that up. It's Rocket Skates. And we are now logged into the system. I'm going to go through our uh, license and click through and it immediately brings me to a screen that is my bootstrapping wizard. So the purpose of this is to help walk me through all the steps necessary for that first trial system. First thing I want to do is of course change my password. I'm just going to set it to demo here so I can show you uh, how these pieces work. Don't need to keep that. Jump back over to info and preferences. You can see it's recognized that I've changed that. And now it's taking me through the next series of steps uh, for the install, uh, which would be uploading Sledgehammer, setting those boot ISOs, provisioning subnets. Some of this, I can uh, take advantage of the fact that we started Digital Rebar with a self runner and make this a little bit easier. Uh, so from that perspective, what I've got going here is that this system is the digital rebar server's own agent. Uh, this is an option that, that we've started to recommend everybody use. 
um, it allows the rebar server to take actions on its own behalf. So it can install Docker or Podman, it can download files for you. And that's exactly what we want it to do in this case. So here we're gonna go ahead and start this bootstrap base system. That'll set my preferences, install SSH keys that I need, and then download the components that I want to make sure everything's running. I can actually click and, and watch the system live, perform updates on the system. Uh, and this is part of our zero touch strategy. So if you bring in a digital rebar system from that command line install, you can tell it that you want to download and bootstrap context and it will go through and uh, build a completely running digital rebar system using digital rebar's own automation system components. And that's what's happening here. It's gonna work in the background while we complete the rest of the setup, which is very, very handy. So we can skip this sledgehammer upload. These ISOs for current boot ems, we'll walk through that in a minute. Uh, now what I wanna do is set up my, my provisioning subnets. And you'll see there aren't any. I do need subnets uh, DHCP to do Pixie Boot provisioning, uh, either Digital Rebar or if you have one, you can uh, use your own. It's a little bit trickier and there are some features that you use, lose. Uh, I have two. This is my public internet. This is my internal VMware, VM NIC inter interface. So I want to use that one. And so it's giving me pretty safe defaults. Uh, my subnet range is going to be 10. Uh, I don't want it to go all the way into my own network, so I'm going to stop it at 99. That looks great. Uh, and I'm going to be the gateway for this system, so that's exactly what I want, it, want to tell it. But this system doesn't have a DNS server, so I'm going to provide it with a public DNS server. Uh, 8888 is going to give us Google's. That looks great. Everything else in here is straightforward and correct. So now that I've done this, I have everything I need to be done and Sledgehammer, our discovery image has been uploaded. Uh, now that all of those pieces and parts are right, I am good to go to actually start provisioning machines, um, or at least almost. There's one step I want to do that's, that's extra and is useful for this system. So this is my DRP server, and I should be able to say it's installed DRP CLI and say info get. And of course, this is gonna fail because I've changed my default password. If I hadn't changed the default password, it would work. It's on the local system. So what I need to do is export RS key. That's gonna tell it what my password is, rocket skates. That's that default user. Of course, you can create new users too. And I set it to be demo. So now when I come through, now I can access the system and run the, run the, run the scripts. One, what we have done to make things uh, set up as a gateway is in the digital rebar provision, there's a series of tools. This is like where the install script is and components like that. One of the things we've added is a VM bridge script that will set up the sub, will inspect the subnet we just created and then set up the bridge forwarding for different operating systems for us. Very, very handy. And so what I want to do is run that script. I'm going to cheat a little bit because I have a curl bash for that. Oops, we don't need to see that. We have a curl bash for that. So I can just download that file. This is the provision VM bridge and then run it. And when I do that, it's going to pick up that setting I have. Uh, tries things for a couple different OSs, so it's not a problem if it fails. But at this point, we have now turned this machine into a gateway. Um, if I had run this script before I set that key, it would have just said, hey, I can't access. I would have seen the same error on and walk me through the process of installing uh, DRP CLI. I do need to run this on the DRP host because it is the gateway. So any machine that's the gateway, I could have actually run set up uh, to make this, make this work. Excellent. So now that we're set with that, this is looking good for everything but machines, we want to go and build a virtual machine to attach to our DRP host. Uh, you can see I've got a couple other ones set up. This is also my scale environment test. I'm going to create a brand new machine, walk you through that whole process. We're just going to call it demo one. This is will be a Linux machine. It really doesn't matter at this point uh, what, we, what we call it from a machine type. I want to give it at least two gigs, four gigs is better. So that's what I'll do of RAM. I'm going to create a, a hard disk for what we're doing. Um, 
8 gig is fine. We could uh, create bigger if we wanted to do real workload testing. Uh, we're just basically going through the motions at this point to prove how everything works together. It's not time to boot it yet. I do need to make a couple of changes. Uh, the first change I need to do is tell it to network disk, network boot first. Um, and I don't need floppy or optical. I do want to eventually have allow things to uh, hard disk boot. That looks excellent. And in my networking, I need to use the host only adapter from that perspective. I can go in and, and tweak things like I could set my MAC addresses and um, Intel Pros and stuff like that. But for that, this, this case, these are great default settings. Um, and, you know, without further tuning, this is exactly what I need to start booting. So if I go and let the system run, move this out of the way, proceed with uh, out the ISO drive, and I'm going to move this over here so we can watch in the background as that machine boots. So DHCP came through. It knows that it's getting the right next server. And it's sending it Sledgehammer as the boot environment. You can actually watch it now booting Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer is our highly optimized, a CentOS 8-based uh, discovery boot system. It runs completely in memory, so it doesn't attach to the disks. Um, runs on pretty much every system we've tested it on from Raspberry Pis to the most deluxe uh, infrastructure we can find. Uh, and at this point, you'll notice in the background here, it's actually identified that the server is available. The uh, Sledgehammer prompt has already shown up. If I hit refresh, you will see this is my Sledgehammer system. Um, we forgot to do one thing in the process here that I always like to remember to do. And that is upload my key. Super helpful to do that. So let's upload my uh, public key. That's good. And um, the other thing I should have done earlier is upload my license. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, if you don't have a license already, uh, we're, we are coming through with a new process. So by the time you see the UX, uh, most of you will have already generated a license. If you're in this older UX version, you'll need to sign up for a rack and account, log in. Uh, it's not required to do this first demo, but you'll very quickly need the license to start doing um, more advanced things like contacts and pooling and um, other fun, fun things to explore. If I want to run this again, I can, I can literally just see if we can set the reset the workflow. That looks great. Um, that will install my SSH keys. I could also reboot it. Um, every time I run the systems now, our default workflows will install SSH keys. I want to prove exactly that. So let's grab this IP address, come over here, another browser we can root. Looks good. Uh, I IP into this machine. I SSH into a machine with this IP address all the time. So of course Linux is going going crazy. And let's see, here's our SSH. That looks great. I was, my keys were added uh, because I had uploaded them. Everything looks good. And if I did this right, I should be able to ping Google. Excellent. So my uh, host is set up as a gateway and all of my other settings are right. So now I have a working machine that I can start provisioning against. Um, and that is the functionally most basic digital rebar install that you can build. Um, you know, we've, we've provisioned, discovered, installed a basic OS. I can now run workflows. I could run color demo and start learning uh, about Rackend's infrastructure as code components. Most people want to go a step further, which is installing an operating system. And let's actually walk you through that. I'm going to show you here. We've completed our bootstrapping wizard, so that looks great. If I wanted to start installing additional operating systems, what I would do is I could pick them from our boot environments that are available. We actually have a catalog that you can start cruising and checking out to see what, what's here. Um, different OS, OS op options within the system. Um, some things we provision as boot environments, some of them by image-based deployments. Image-based deployments, uh, we have several videos about that. It's a great way to install Windows and Linux and VMware. Uh, we recommend people investigate image-based deployments. It's a really uh, strong way to do it. And there's a lot to play with even within the catalog itself where you can download and install uh, capabilities into the system uh, as you want. Um, 
basically pulling things down. I don't, for example, our burn-in workflows, I can choose the version that I want. I'm on the latest version, so I'd want to do that. And something as simple as download and install. And now I've enhanced Digital Rebar's capabilities using our infrastructure as code catalog. If we want to do that for installing CentOS, I would find my CentOS version. Over here, it will let me download that, and I can download that ISO and install it. I have done that already. And then I could choose in, in ISOs, then to select and upload that file from my uh, uploads directory here. So here is my CentOS directory to upload. Um, that is easy and it's certainly a good way to do it. I want to give you another option because it's useful to show some CLI interactions and, and how things work from the CLI. So over here from the CLI, I have, this is that same directory, so if I uh, show you the, the items, here is my CentOS image, and I have DRP CLI installed here. What I need to be able to do is to point it to that uh, digital rebar endpoint. So I'm gonna be, have to say uh, export RS endpoint. RS is Rocket Skates, the original code name for uh, digital rebar. HTTPS, same address I've been using, 192.168.56.10, uh, 100. Uh, 8092, and I'm going to also have to set my credentials. And when I do that, I should be able to go and get my information here. And let me go ahead and start that process. So DRP CLI, ISOs. If I want to see what options I have for DRP CLI, ISOs, uh, if I just type it, it will show me uh, different options that I have, including uh, different pieces I want to upload. So I'm going to upload the ISOs, my source and destination. That looks great. So I'm going to take CentOS here and DRP CLI ISOs upload. That's my CentOS as CentOS. That looks great. And I'm going to go ahead and start this. This is a big file, so it's going to take some time um, for, for this to process. While we wait, I want to show you how to get the DRP CLI on your own. If I go into the files directory here, you'll see this is uh, DR, DRP includes the DRP CLIs for different architectures, so you can download the one that you want for your system and install it. You can also click on the CLI button, takes you to the help, um, and you can then review the different uh, CLI options behind, behind the scenes, including downloading it and then uh, bringing it down from the cloud. So at this point, uh, we're almost ready. We just have to wait for this ISO to upload. I'm gonna come back when it has. So this is what it looks like when that command finishes. That's excellent, telling me how big it is. If I jump in, I can do a quick DF check. You can see I did one a little earlier. And wow, we have gone from just some of the disk to having a significant amount of that relatively small 50 gig disk used up. So make sure you, you provision enough space if you want to do a, a CentOS install. The, the canonical one's a bit lighter, uh, much lighter, actually. So now that I, um, I have CentOS installed, let me show you what that looks like over here in boot ISOs. That looks fantastic. That's the, the ISO I'm expecting. If it was still uploading, it would add dot part to that. I can come into my machines list and show you what this looks like. I'm gonna keep this VM running on top so I can take actions and you can still see them. Get this out of the way a little bit. Over here, this is my, my machine I want to install CentOS on. And I can just pick CentOS base out of the system, say go. And you'll notice as soon as I start that workflow, it recognizes it's a new boot environment and it reboots it for me and starts the process. So here, uh, instead of going back into a sledgehammer discovery, 
it is doing the Pixie Linux and doing the CentOS 8 uh, initialization and uh, init. And it'll go through this whole process and, and run that workflow straight out of the box, ultimately to install CentOS 8. This is also going to take several minutes um, to go through the process. It's one of the reasons why we really like image deploys. They're much faster. Sledgehammer is incredibly optimized um, to go quickly. And so when you're dealing with uh, the basic systems, Sledgehammer is really a go-to for um, discovering, inventorying, pulling a whole bunch of data. Let me show you those things while this works in the background. On the system, because we've already taken it through the discovery process, you'll see our GoHigh inventory has all the data. This is a significant amount of information. Uh, you can decompose this and pull it out. It knows what it was booted on, what its MAC address is, and you can add ad hoc information into the system. You can also add profiles that define system behaviors in addition uh, to how that, that runs. Uh, the global, when we upload our SSH keys, we added them to the global parameters, these are available to all machines, but I can add parameters or profiles that then add parameters to machines in groups, or I can come into a machine itself and add parameters into it one-on-one. -on -one. So for example, if I wanted to have this, this system also set up the second uh, network, I could specify extra interfaces, kickstart extra interfaces, that looks great. Um, it's probably too late for me to do this now since the system's already building, but I can go back and pick up uh, the second uh, ENP0S8. If I save that, then when I build the system the next time, it will bring in um, a second interface. Now, you'll remember <laughs> um, this VM is only defined with one NIC, so uh, this wouldn't pick that up. If I was uh, added it as my NAT interface, then that would allow me to talk from this machine directly to the internet. I don't need to do that since I added the, the gateway. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that um, unnecessary um, extra piece of data and go back and save. Uh, but at this point, I'm just touring you through a couple of extra things about digital rebar that people typically wanna see when they're sort of playing with the system. But this is the basics, right? We've set up the system, we set up a subnet, we've DHCP to Pixie Boot. Uh, sledgehammer and then we downloaded an, an OS ISO and are installing that OS. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let that run in the background. It's over here and when it's done I will check back in and uh, show you how that's working and that I can SSH into it. I'll be right back. So uh, we've waited about five minutes and uh, the CentOS machine is now fully provisioned on the system and back at a login prompt. And if we look at digital rebar, it says CentOS base is complete, green check mark, everything looks fantastic. Uh, if I come over to this other system here, uh, I can say SSH into root at 192.168. Let's say we should have this in our browser history. Let's go back, here it is. Once again, um, it's unhappy because we <laughs> it's a new key, um, whoops, new key. Uh, same IP address, so we have to clear that out of our, our history. And there we go. We just logged into this uh, next CentOS system that we just built, uh, completely ready to go. And ping Google. Once again, that's looking really good. So I got internet connectivity, everything good. Brand new CentOS uh, system set up and ready to go. If I want to then convert this back and say, you know, this was great, but I'm done with that system, I can go back here, simply change the system back to uh, Discover Base and go. And now it'll flip the system automatically for me. The boot have changed. It's going to say I need to change it and automatically set it back into uh, the Sledgehammer boot environment. So I can now flip and switch and reprovision the systems as easy as that. Uh, going into Sledgehammer only takes a couple seconds and the system will be ready to go again. Uh, very, very powerful, easy to use functionality. Uh, and of course, if you continue in, uh, we have videos showing you how to extend these workflows so you can do whatever post-provisioning actions that you want, uh, including Ansible and Terraform and uh, scripts. Uh, the possibilities are endless. 
Hope this was helpful for your first introdu introduction to Digital Rebar, and now you are confident about setting up, installing, and playing with it yourself. Of course, we do have other ways to test and play, including cloud-only deployments and uh, bare metal, which is the next step in your journey. Hope this was helpful. Please join us at rackend.com. Join our Slack community. We'd love to interact, hear your stories, and uh, help you accomplish what you're trying to do with data center and infrastructure operations. Thanks.